The recorder emerged on the music scene sometime in the 14th century and seems to have quickly spread along the medieval trade routes. Various bits of medieval recorder have been unearthed by archaeologists, mainly from what is now the Netherlands, Germany and Poland, the best preserved being from the Hanseatic trading town of Tartu in Estonia. The Tartu recorder is slightly shorter than the modern descanter so often used in primary schools. As time passed, bigger and bigger instruments were developed. Henry VIII had a collection of perhaps 70 of them, the largest being a great bass, probably playing two octaves lower than a descant. This illustration from Michael Praetorius's Syntagma Musicum of 1618 shows the range and variety possible. Early recorders had a straight bore which probably limited the range to somewhat under two octaves, though being relatively easy to make. In the 17th century, French makers developed a tapered bore, which produced a full two octaves, but the success of these Baroque recorders was to be short-lived, for it began to be superseded by the transverse flute. For a while, the instruments coexisted, as demonstrated in Taylorman's concerto, in which the two instruments partner each other. But increasing professionalisation of the music scene and the use of larger orchestral forces aged out the humble recorder. Its revival began around 1900 with a sudden interest in the music of much earlier times and it was quickly seen that the recorder could play a role in school and adult education. Unfortunately, though the recorder is easy to play, it is not easy to play well. And perhaps that explains why Samuel Pepys wrote on the 8th of April, 1668, Did buy a recorder, which I do intend to learn to play upon, the sound of it being of all sounds in the world most pleasing to me. Yet no more is heard about recorders in the entire diary following the first flush of enthusiasm. Illustrations of the descant, a bass and a treble recorder will be a separate illustration of the tenor later on. So why would you play the recorder? I learnt for a year in my first year at secondary school. It was a ruse by the music teacher to get us interested so that we progress to a real instrument, in my case the violin, which was not a success. Then, in my early twenties, I heard David Munro play at the Senate House in Cambridge. Rather optimistically, I thought I could do that, so I took up the instrument once more. 
I then joined the Society of Recorder Players and have successively been a member of the London, Guildford, Glasgow and Macclesfield branches. We are always keen to welcome new members who have a basic knowledge of the instrument. And I was also a founder member of the Congleton UTA Recorder Group, which can also help people beginning on the instrument. But that doesn't ex ask to answer the question, why would you learn? For the amateur, the recorder has the merit of being relatively cheap, portable and, comparatively speaking, quietish. But I have met professional musicians who have turned to it because it may be less physically demanding than their original instrument, or for a new challenge, or, more positively, because they love the mellow sound. Some say it's the closest instrument to the human voice. Some appreciate the vast range of repertoire from medieval to avant-garde. A professional player in Germany told me that she felt your own breath becomes the sound. For instance, unlike an oboe or a clarinet, there are no reeds to get in the way. It's encouraging that recorder players have had some success in the BBC Young Musician competition in recent years, following on the trail first blazed by Charlotte Barbour Condini in 2012. 